Hey guys, welcome back to my AFK Arena. In today's video, we're checking out the new Wild Hero at Tamaris. Now, this one, okay. First things first. They've got to fix, they've got to fix this. Like the character is already broken. <laughs> they've got to fix the idle animation. Honestly, like, I I can't even deal with, I, I can't deal with it. Wait, because you can't have an idle animation like this character uh, and, and, and have six times speed in the game. This like blew my mind away. I, I like had to close my eyes. It hurts. It, it, like, I, I don't even know what that is. Like you can't have that as your idle animation for a character. Even at two times speed, dude, it's too much. It's too much. Like that just, it, even honestly, even after that at one time speed, it gets a bit trippy. So, I mean, ideally I hope they can adjust that idle animation, but that is the first thing. But <laughs> jokes aside, Tamaris, uh, it is a male character. I just, honestly, I saw this character. I was like, okay, this is like Mirko from My Hero Academia. And I just thought it was a female, but it's a, it's it's a male character, which threw me out a bit because I just had serious Mirko vibes. So if I get that wrong when I'm talking about him, it's purely because of Mirko. Uh, but this character, I think, is going to be very very usable through all stages of the game. Kit looks amazing. Uh, I got some synergies that I'm thinking of already. We will do testing, obviously, in the future, but. Pretty cool breakdance moves too. Anyway, let's get into it. So let's expand this, go for the long descriptions. Uh, spins around violently one time. Each spin damages nearby enemies for 220% of attack rating, stuns them and drags them towards Tamaris. Tamaris spins one more time, up to four times for every one enemy within range. The range of the spin increases with each spin. Uh, when he stops spinning, he forcibly kicks the targets, dealing damage and his attack uh, the blah, 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 and also he's immune to control effects while using the skill. Skill ups just increase the numbers and then the final kick also silences enemies within range for one second. It's only one second but that could be pretty clutch on against some ultimates and stuff like that. Then we have the next ability which is Earthbreaker. Uh, Tamaris leaps high into the air then dive kicks on the area with the most enemy heroes damaging all enemies uh, in the area for 200% of the attack uh, and knocking them airborne. He's immune to control Control effects while using this skill. We get some uh, number increases and it will immediately use Earthbreaker at the start of battle. I said I was hoping for a lunging unit. This is an agility based warrior, unfortunately. If it was a ranger, you'd make massive use out of the um, out of dual divinity. Unfortunately, we don't get access to dual divinity on this character, which kind of sucks. But we it is what it is. Also, like, it's got, like, dodge in the kit, and it, I, I just feel like if this was a ranger, it would synergize well, even though we already have too many rangers, but is what it is. It's warrior. Uh, then we have in infectious enthusiasm. The more enemy heroes around Tamaris, uh, the more excited he becomes. For every one enemy hero near him, he gains one stack of enthusiasm, uh, stacks up to five times. Uh, each stack of enthusiasm increases his dodge by six points and his magic suppression by two points. Uh, each stack in increases the numbers, uh, da -da -da, shortens the cooldown of Earthbreaker by 0.2 seconds each time uh, he successfully dodges an ability. We d I don't know the exact cooldown of this, so how much 0.2 seconds is on a percentage base, I don't know. Then we have the uh, 30 engraving. When Tamaris deals damage, uh, the target will lose additional health equal to 1% of their lost health for each stack of enthusiasm he has, up to 20%. Now, I'm tw I'm assuming that up to 20% also stacks up with the stacks, because otherwise, if you're at like five stacks, like it's going to be nothing. Like It's going to always get capped to that 20%. So I'm assuming like if you get the five stacks or with signature item, you can get up to 10 stacks. It goes up to 200% of his attack rating. Otherwise, it's kind of useless because it's only once every three seconds for each enemy. If it didn't have a cooldown, then 20% would make sense. But I'm assuming it does go up with stacks uh, of the buff being the limit of it. That's the way I would understand it anyway. And that's the way I would have sold it. And then we have none other than Scorpion's Get Over Here, which is a sick name for an ability. Uh, Tamaris flings the, his grappling hook at up to two enemies, damaging them for 230% of his attack rating and dragging them towards himself. Enemies furthest away are, are targeted first, which is good. Really good grouping capabilities. Hooked enemies have their attack ratings reduced by 10% for five seconds. If there's only one enemy, uh, the damage is increased to 250 and attack rating reduction is 
increase to 15%. Then we have some number increases. Level three skill up, we get the 15% to two enemies on attack reduction, 25% for one enemy, which isn't too bad. And then at the 60 engraving, hooked enemies are silenced for 2.5 seconds. So he's one of those ones where I feel like you can get, like, I, I feel like a lot of characters are like, you know, getting more necessary engravings. I feel like this isn't the most necessary engravings unless I'm completely missing something. I think it would be nice for these, but I don't think it's going to be necessary because I feel like the utility in this character is the grouping capabilities and then you let your other characters do their thing. Let's jump into the signature item. Uh, at base, enemy heroes hit by uh, get over here have their tenacity permanently reduced by three points and it can stack. Uh, then it goes up to five points, which can stack. Any stacks of enthusiasm he receives last until the end of battle. So basically you can and just max out your stacks pretty easily and then at level 30 uh, immediately receives five stacks enthusiasm at the start of battle and the maximum number of enthusiasm stacks goes up to 10 keeping in mind you just get one every time so it, it, you stack that really easily i think that's pretty solid uh because they last till the end of battle then we go on to this one uh the furniture Enthusiasm rubs off on his allies. Uh, each stack of Enthusiasm grants all allied heroes six points of dodge and two points of magic suppression. Going up to 10 stacks with the 30 signature item gives 60 points of dodge. I can see some characters really making use of this. Uh, the first one that comes to mind is Geralt because he works really well to dodge. Uh, also, um, Chad, the new uh, Celestial. Uh, I feel like those are two units that are really going to benefit from these type of effects. And both of them have solid synergies with their abilities to what... Um, what Tamaris has. So I'm thinking those two are going to be pretty solid synergies with this uh, based on that. Uh, and then at level nine, each stack of enthusiasm he has increases the attack rating of all allies heroes by 4%. So you get a, up to a 40% attack buff at base with 30 sing tritum. You're starting the battle with a 20% attack buff for all allies and it goes up to 40%. I think that is pretty solid. So like I said, uh, honestly, it's the grouping uh, it's the grouping capabilities of this character that I think is really going to make him very, very viable. There's a lot of short range AoEs, uh, you know, tight AoEs that are going to be very valuable for this. Uh, and, you know, we always do Chicken Iron, uh, but just being able to group them without requiring those two units and having a single unit to group, I think this is going to pair really well with something like Odin as well, because then you're just going to be dropping them on top of each other, and it's just going to basically infinite stun them. Uh, maybe we go back to the days of portal party where you have this dude grouping them and then you have Pippa and Odin both portaling them on top of each other and it's just like a never ending cycle of stuns I don't think that will come into full meta because there's too many immunities but in certain situations that can be a thing maybe we look at something like Lucretia he could be a good tech in a Lucretia style of team uh, maybe in a Thorin team where you can group all the enemies on top of the Thorin you get your Pippa to drop your Thorin on top of the enemy team you get an instant group up like that and away you go I just think this unit is going to have a lot of synergies and a lot of capabilities uh, and I'm really excited to build this one. I, I'm, I'm super keen to test this on Chiasma and see how it goes. But it will require a little bit more testing just to see exactly how everything functions. But let's jump over here and take a look at the abilities themselves. As you can see, at the start of the battle, jumps over, groups those two enemies up, and then we go in. We do, we do some little smacks, and then we do the big AoE. And as you can see, I, I'm curious because it's hard to see the ult on how much it groups, but he does use that jump attack again that goes on the most congested area. So I feel like he's gonna be super effective in grouping, like super effective in grouping. Like, uh, I, I'm just, I'm really liking this kit. I'm really liking this kit. So let's go again. Let's just look at this uh, without any allies, see if you can get some dodges. So let's just go, I haven't even tested this to be honest. Okay, it looks like they dodged the grapple. They dodged the grapple. Rip the dream. So we're just going to do what I like to do in these where I slowly increase the number of units in the team uh, and then see where it gets to just so we can just have him shine and see what he can do. So does the grappling... Looks like the grappling just gets dodged there by the... Uh, by the what's-his-face. So that's kind of frustrating, but that's okay. So let's just do something like this. And that should keep them distracted and then we can see what this can do. Boom. Yeah, it, it, I don't know what's happening with the grappling. Because I feel like the grappling should have happened at some stage along along the way there. But not happening at all. Alright, let's jump back out. Let's put you back there. Let's go you and you. And we'll put you in as well. So let's just put you in, see how this goes. Okay, so we get the jump. We get the jump, which looks wicked. It's honestly a sick skill. It looks like he just tries to grapple just the uh, 
Just the Arthur. I don't. I don't know what's going on there. Oh no! Do, or did we grapple in the uh, the Oscar? Not too sure exactly how that's working, to be honest. Yeah, that Tassie doing stuff. I want to see another grapple. Here comes the grapple. There it is. Got the grouped. It interrupts the Verk, to, Verk as well, so that's not too bad. Honestly, pretty solid. I, 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 I just like it, it. We don't have enough to test here. But like I said, I don't think he's going to be there for the damage. He doesn't have any insane scaling. He doesn't have any insane multipliers. But just as a support unit, when you can, if you get to 30 signature on nine furniture, to be able to buff all your allies like that, even if you don't get to nine furniture and you only get to three because nine's the hefty investment, you lose out on the attack buff, but you still get the defensive buffs in the dodge and you still have all the grouping capabilities. Uh... And like, on, honestly, like, I feel like he's one of those units that would still have use, even if you have zero investment to signature on furniture and all that stuff. Obviously, the more investment, the better. But I feel like just those capabilities, as long as he can survive. See, this is going to be the issue. Maybe something like Tano. So Tano's can teleport with him and take the aggro to allow him to group because I think he will need stats because otherwise he's going to go lunge into the enemy team and then just like get clapped because he's over there at high deficits. But I definitely think this is going to have viability uh it's gonna take a bit more testing but i like what i see from the kit and what it offers just as a pure manipulation unit to make teams work so let me know if you guys have any thoughts on this one uh team compositions and stuff like that i'm keen to see but yeah in general pretty solid unit i'm thinking at this stage but thanks for watching guys hope you have an awesome day and i look forward to seeing the next one cheers